Welcome to episode 60 of the Luxury Travel Marketer. I am David, your podcast host, co-owner and co-founder of Jade Wolf Marketing. Today's episode is going to be about the limbic map, emotional archetypes or limbic types, and their importance for neuromarketing in luxury travel. Uh, before we get into this really interesting, uh, slightly complex topic, uh, make sure to go to patreon.com slash jadewolf if you want to support this podcast and you don't necessarily want to have anything to do with our agency or our marketing services, uh, but you just feel this is a useful podcast for you and you want to support it by becoming one of our uh, free tiers of supporters. Um, if you are a business or a marketer in working in luxury travel, aviation, yachting, um, hospitality, go to jadewolfmarketing.com, uh, navigate to our resource section, check out our guides, our podcast and blog post archive, or fill out a contact uh, callback request directly and write us a little bit about your marketing challenge and we will get back to you to see if we are the right fit to help you uh, get to the next level. Uh, and again, you know, uh, we I've been saying this on the podcast uh, a couple times in the last couple episodes. We've partnered up with superyachtradio.com, Maven Dave, great hosts, uh, great shows, great guests, all about the super yacht industry or the maritime industry in general, from conservation to, you know, CEOs of uh, big yacht companies like Fraser and uh, you, you name it. Um, check them out, uh, superyachtradio.com. Uh, so let's get into the topic. So the limbic map, right? The limbic map, uh, it's a concept from neuromarketing. Uh, neuromarketing for the people who haven't listened to our podcasts, episodes on emotional resonance and relevancy and, you know, context. Um, is basically a discipline is within marketing that deals with how the human brain uh, reacts to certain stimuli. Um, how certain things that we see, maybe in form of uh, visuals, text, videos, music, uh, in marketing, in advertising, can affect you know how our emotional world uh, you know evolves or like uh, responds uh, in a negative or positive way. A positive meaning uh, nudging us towards the purchase in in the marketing context. In negative meaning, you know we feel distrust and we we are hesitant to move forward with a certain product or service right and this is especially important in luxury since luxury speaks to the to the five should speak to the five senses we want to induce a certain um, desire amplify it potentially to the level where people feel like purchasing a luxury travel trip uh, charting a, a jet a yacht uh, for a vacation or staying in a certain branded luxury hotel or a boutique hotel or resort uh, it will be a transformative experience and they will by participating in the luxury dream feel that they are you know that they have arrived quote unquote so to speak and that they deserve it and that they're a special person of relevance in the world uh, there's a lot of different uh, themes and patterns to unravel there but in this episode i'm going to talk about the aspect of uh, limb the limbic map the limbic map uh, the limbic center actually in the brain is a part of your brain that uh, kind of like you know uh, uh, it's responsible for your emotions, your gut reaction, your subconscious uh, opinions that you form very quickly when you see something or when you encounter a new situation. Some, I think I'm not 100% sure here because I'm obviously not a neuroscientist, but I think some people call it the lizard brain. Um, it's basically, you know, giving us really, really low level, um, you know, uh, motivations, adrenaline, fear, flight, fight, flight, um, those kind of things. But it's also a very powerful influence when it comes to how we how we perceive uh, luxury advertising, right? And the limbic map is basically basically an effort by neuromarketers to kind of like map that um, to uh, certain parameters to a grid, so we can kind of like realize um, what uh, you know where our customers are in terms of their preferences or their like resistance or resistance. To our marketing so the free access is, and if you just want to visualize have this visual in front of you just google the limbic map neuromarketing and you will find a bunch of pictures uh, that explain it and show the map so there's free accesses so uh, there's like x ax xi accesses i'm sorry i don't know what the right plural of, of x is access is but anyway there's free it's a stimulant on the left dominance on the right and on the like third dimension down is balance right so um if you could imagine it like a circle around these three type of extreme points you will have like a pie 
and each pie there will be a pie chart piece that's maybe between balance and dominance right but gravitating more towards dominance or more towards balance and you will have one between stimulant and balance that's more towards balance or more and more that's more towards stimulant now if you look at these pie charts and you fill that limbing map with adjectives like authority freedom rebellion, courage um you know harmony those kind of like typical adjectives we maybe want to use in our luxury copywriting um you will come up with what is called limbic types limbic types um those are uh, not in any sequence uh, of, of order or hierarchy the adventurer the performer the disciplined one the traditionalist the harmonizer the open-minded one or the bon vivant as it also sometimes called and the hedonist now why are these types useful and if you uh, ever you know read or studied a little bit Jungian psychology they will kind of like sound kind of like familiar because they are actually quite uh, similar to the Jungian archetypes that you can find in psychology as well but why is why are these types important in marketing in luxury marketing well um, when we create personas and on this podcast we have stressed it a lot of times uh, it doesn't matter if you do brand marketing or if you have a stronger focus towards direct marketing like we at Jade Wolf have uh, you you should use data in your company or in the industry uh, or from people who know what they're talking about to compile personas right uh, man manifestations archetypes of your ideal customer uh, a lot of people kind of stop at you know just listing popular brands demographics age gender family status where their wealth comes from what wealth tier they are in which geography they live in maybe if they're having a better persona they list kind of like technology habits technology savviness um you know certain political uh, opinions and things like that but all that stuff um is often hard to translate into briefs for copywriting for visual design uh for editorial production video production um unless you add an emotional component to it and there's different ways uh, we talked about a couple of the methods that are out there i mean one is for example um what we call emotional purchase triggers uh, dan kennedy is uh, you know a fan of those it's just certain emotions that you want to hit through ad using the adjectives or storytelling that will reflect with you know the kind of like emotional world of your prospect a limbic map limbic type approach archetype approach is another one right uh, that is particularly common in in cro and conversion rate optimization and it's a really useful concept so you basically take all the information that you have about your persona and then you look at the limbic map and you try to figure out okay these kind of like uh, traits or indications what did it tell you like about uh, the adjectives that you could find in that limbic map and once you can kind of like pinpoint on that grid where your, your your ideal prospect customer client guest is you can associate them probably to one of these archetypes right and then you have a persona that's actually really useful and uh, helpful in creating pot uh, creating i want to say creating, podcast, creating uh, copywriting creating uh, working with your photographer with your designer and really maybe even salespeople, right if you're a broker or like whatever and really hitting the right messaging that is based not on gut feeling or just experience of an individual alone but on a concept that is kind of like um, more universal and, and grounded in your data but as well in psychology so um, we do that usually as part of a strategy project um, we want to create better personas and we're always looking at ways to create better personas because if we do the work in the beginning uh, we will have less uh, trial and error later and our campaigns will usually run better and be more effective, generate more leads, more bookings for our clients. So uh, do that for sure. Check out these limbic types. Uh, I'm not going to go into each in general, um, but I can. But the names again speak for themselves. Uh, again, the adventurer, the performer, disciplined, traditionalist, harmonizer, open-minded slash bon vivant, and the hedonist. You can imagine what type of marketing luxury marketing what type of uh, arguments usps might uh, you know features and benefits might resonate with these people right but you can take it one step further uh, than just you know like kind of like doing it uh, in german they say p mal daumen you know just roughly like putting your thumb out and trying to like okay these guys probably want this type of marketing 
But instead of that, you can once you have these archetypes, you can go, okay, what is their uh, emotional motivation, right? What would what, what, what drives them on? What drives a, a performer on in terms of motivation? It's probably seeking status. It's probably seeking, having, seeing results, data, uh, you know, being perceived as best in class or working only with the best in class. Um, you know, uh, that can be like a strong indicator. And then you have emotional objections, right? And an emotional objection for a performer might be, oh, um, you know, this yacht company is not the best one in Italy and they don't even have the best yachts. Uh, they don't have the biggest, uh, you know, uh, vessels. And, you know, they don't have the shortest, they don't have the longest track record. And, you know, they don't have the data to show. And if I, if it's just some no name thing, I might look really, really uh, shitty in front of my business associates that I wanted to invite to this charter trip to discuss, I don't know, deals in 221 or like 222, whatever it might be. Right. And just a scenario I came up with out of the back of my head. But uh, you want to make sure that you address these things, right? Emotional motivations, emotional objections, and that doing that extra work on your personas, having a limbic map, you, studying neuromarketing a little bit, and figuring out what these archetypes want, and then figuring out is your ideal customer maybe like just one or two of these archetypes? And have you been speaking to other archetypes? And with them, it's like a really hard sell every time you struggling. There's a lot of uh, people coming back. And, you know, obviously in luxury, especially in, in super yachting, for example, we work with the people who are the buyers, right? It's, it's, they have the wealth, the, the means. That is a finite amount of people around the world, but it's still in the 10,000s, uh, at least when it comes to kind of like people in the charter space, uh, which is the entry level point to, to super yachting for most people. So um, you might want to consider, okay, you know, have we really adapted our marketing towards the correct kind of like personas and archetypes, right? And in turn, if you do that, will lead to better campaigns because then every time you, uh, with your in-house team, with agencies, with freelancers, uh, with media companies, whatever it might be, you create, a, you write a creative brief or you have a brainstorming session or, uh, you know, uh, some kind of like uh, storyboard or uh, any kind of process where you're figuring out how should everything look and feel uh, what should be the messaging that we use in sales and in marketing? Um, you can you bring up that data and say like, hey guys, you know our biggest deals are uh, you know most loyal guests that you know buy the most extra services when they stay at a hotel, or uh, this kind of family structure with these kind of backgrounds and psychologies tend to uh, go for the largest safari package or the largest, you know, uh, ski trip uh, with lodging and everything, um, then you might want to just focus your marketing exclusively on that and your sales messaging is on that. And then just, you know, treat the other type of leads or, or bookings when they come in as uh, an added benefit, but really try to squeeze the value and out of your best customers, which you can sell to the most easy and going to have the largest uh, customer lifetime value for you, if that makes sense, right? Um, because really in, in premium it starts, but in luxury it really becomes obvious. You, you don't want to sell to everyone. You want to sell to the people who not only can buy, but have also a, a you know, um, proclivity to buy and to buy from you because they like your brand. They like your identity, your messaging and the type of tone that you, uh, you know, have in your copywriting, the type of visual assets you provide, the type of information, uh, People buy, especially, you know, when it comes to things like brokerages, like sales brokerage in like in yachting um, or, or charter brokers, people probably will charter from you. Obviously, price plays a role. They, they want to like, you know, they want to have a benchmark of what a charter for one week in the Mediterranean in Italy or in Croatia would cost. Uh, and then they would, might compare that. But they also might just go with you if they're a, uh, super high net worth, uh, very high net worth, or even ultra high net worth individual because they like you, they trust you. And if they trust you, you know, salespeople often want to attribute it to their magic or their market know how and, uh, you know, charm, good communication skills, um, psychology, having experience with these type of individuals, their buying behavior, and knowing, you know, what the going rates are for certain yachts, what is on the market, and being in tune with the industry. Um, you know, is obviously valuable, right? 
uh, but but they're also buying from you because you know you probably spoke the right language you hit the right tones you, you said the right words um, and, and you sold them in a way that was comfortable that was transparent that was you know uh, easy to follow through it didn't create more problems uh, it didn't take time out of their busy schedule so they could focus on the pleasurable aspect of the whole thing which is you know deciding what the what the package should be if you're a travel agency or a dmc or tour operator what um you know which yacht they want and what kind of bells and whistles they want for it in terms of cruise and entertainment uh what where what the charter tour should be like which route they want to take um if they're chartering a jet you know like um the, all the like amenities that the private charter will have if it's not just business aviation out of reasons for of convenience uh, you know how they can impress people if they take them on this trip uh, if it's a first time private charter for example um, all these kind of things right so um, don't be overly simplistic with your personas uh, look at the limbic map uh, understand that, uh, that people buy often based on emotions supported by rationale uh, not the other way around um, and yeah and, and just do do better marketing just just you know use the like research in neuroscience behavioral science um that's a topic that i'm covering a lot right now in my own private like research and and upskilling for our agency and, and it's probably obvious from the like couple episodes that i did on, on these topics that i think is really important you know and and, and there's uh, great books about that on emotional advertising and uh how you should can sell to the subconscious and you know if we want to sell luxury we not sure only should try to provide best in class type experiences services and products uh, but also a sales process and a marketing approach that can perceive that really is all the aspects all the technologies that are available to us with our resources with our budget and you know um, trying to provide a really nice experience for the customer and so we will get that uh, word of mouth that incentive talk about you know us in the future and like I said in the beginning, at uh, this, this point that I'm making here about limbic maps and archetypes and, and having better personas uh, and going, uh, you know, uh, full blast on all the aspects where you can go uh, with your marketing is that even if you're a brand marketer, right? Even if you're the director of brand marketing for a big uh, hospitality company or something like that or chief brand officer, um, you still want to a little bit into neuromarketing, into the limbic map because for you you might all your like kpis might be oh i want just so and so much reach around the world i want to be involved in so and so many luxury sponsorships events collaborations influencer company that i kind of like uh, measure with uh tone of that i kind of like uh, measure with uh tone of customer tone of uh, uh, tone of customer voice of customer research yeah that's the word market research focus groups surveys right uh, feedback from our salespeople. I want to like have that obviously us being top of mind in a specific in specific social circles. But even then, you know, you you, you might benefit uh, for your media spend and you know for your for your like return in terms of top of mind and brand equity over time by you know developing these things inside your company further. These limbic maps, these psycholo psychological uh, you know caveats, emotional triggers. Because it will be just beneficial. And if you're doing di di direct marketing, be it like traditional direct mail, like just sending flowers, uh, gift baskets, and you know, whiskey, Japanese whiskey bottles to, to prospects to get them to pick up your phone, which is something nice and we don't disregard that at Jade, which is something nice and we don't disregard that at Jade Wolf Marketing. Don't get, don't get me wrong. That still can work really well in B2B and in B2C. And in luxury, definitely, if, 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 the, if the mailing is, is high quality and customized to the prospect, maybe by using wealth X profiles or something like that, uh, dossiers. But even if you're doing data-driven uh, direct marketing online, right, if you're building funnels like us, like we do, if you, if you, if you do media buying, uh, social media search, whatever it is, direct media programmatic influencers, um, and you're applying this, this, this approach of direct response and kind of like great copywriting and uh, getting people into your database and remarketing and using all marketing automation to kind of like sell them along these lines at every step of the way right at every step of the funnel um, you can use analytics collect data sharpen your personas uh, use psychological principles to just make sure 
that you are getting the most out of your marketing campaigns and that nobody can tell you uh, this wasn't target, targeted, this was too broad, this didn't really speak to me. Um, so yeah, make use of that. Uh, there's literature about that as well that you can read. It's, it's not a secret. Again, there are no secrets here on this podcast and in, in great luxury marketing, there's just know-how, uh, knowledge, study, and application, right? So, so that's it for today on, on, on limbic maps and limbic types or uh, emotional archetypes. I hope you found it useful. I hope you will be able to apply it in your marketing. Um, if you need help doing that, uh, and if you have a marketing budget, uh, you know, that's enough, big enough to work with an agency like us, um, go to jwolfmarketing.com, fill out a callback request. We can probably help you or at least tell you, point you in the right direction if, if you cannot afford our services. Um, we usually try to be helpful to people. We get the craziest, craziest requests uh, and craziest questions uh, without any context and even those we kind of like respond and try to like to help people uh, even if it takes time out of our day um, so don't be afraid to do that and again uh, give uh, Maeve and Dave Dempsey on superyachtradio.com uh, you know uh, give them a chance listen to their show they play great music and uh, you know a great backdrop for for your yachting experience or if you're just part of the industry and you just want to know where everything is going what other Charter companies, uh, shipbuilders, designers, um, you know, maritime conservationists, um, you know, coaches in the space do and how they can maybe, you know, ins- maybe listening to their show will inspire you and help you like become a better professional or, or do something great for you in your career. So, so check them out. Um, that's it for today. Sorry that this podcast went live on, on a Friday. Normally we try to do Wednesdays, Thursdays. Uh, because we know that's what you guys like the most uh, because that's when most of the people listen Um, but uh, we are traveling currently in Europe even though there's more and more corona restrictions happening Um, and uh, you know we will be traveling I'm actually going to the airport in half an hour so I hope uh, you enjoyed this episode and you will tune in next week when we have a new interesting topic for you until then uh, take care and be safe